Good evening to a day late recording. Matt is semi-healthier, so here we are. But your lead topic is that Twitch is going to fuck around and find out. Fuck around and find out. And yeah. here we go. Lots of exciting things happening this week with uh, people fucking around and finding out, actually. That could be the theme of the podcast. You know? Uh, yeah, Gamers Do Podcast. Your weekly roundup of news and commentary related to the video game industry. Anything else that might pique our interest? Special edition podcast. Saturday podcast. We call it the FAFO. The FAFO. The fuck around and find <laughs> out. Okay, fuck around and find out. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose if you didn't want to fuck around and find out, you could just sit on your ass and play video games. Well, Matt, there's one thing I specialize in. You know what? Some of us can't partake of that greatness anymore. Some of us don't have responsibilities other than to themselves. Sweet, sweet life. (laughs) (laughs) So I get to indulge myself (laughs) in things like Fortnite Season (laughs) 4. Return to Monkey Island for the PC and Switch. Uh, Construction Simulator. So, you know, when I don't want to do work on my own house, I build an entire skyscraper in a video game. That's fair. Same thing when I don't want to cook dinner. Cooking Simulator. Exactly. Then I have the satisfaction of they, turning the game off and the kitchen being clean, and I am still hungry. So it, you know, it's fifty-fifty. I always think it's the developers twisting a knife that they're like, "Yeah, we really fucking got you. You <laughs> won't even make yourself dinner, but you'll make it for us in this fucking video game." Oh, look! It's level two, and the food critic's coming. You better impress him, <laughs> you starving idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Go eat your hot pocket, piece of hot shit. Hot pocket. <laughs> number four, Deathloop makes its way to Series X. Number five, Hard Space Ship Breaker for the PlayStation and Xbox. Number six, Solstice for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Number seven, The Dio Field Chronicle. Dio? Dio? I don't know. For PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Number eight, Matt's favorite, Gundam Evolution for the PC. Number nine, Potion Permit. For the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch, that is the permit you need to sell drugs in Alabama. You said that with such confidence that I was like, maybe that's a thing. (laughs) I feel like, nah, maybe. You know what? Why not? Run with it. Number 10, serial cleaners for the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. You got to clean up after the murderers. Number 11, session skate sim for the PlayStation and Xbox. Number 12, Slime Rancher 2 for PC and Xbox. Got to ranch them slimes. It's like Farming Simulator, but with slimes. And simpler, technically. Cuter. Do you grow them and then harvest them? Kind of, yeah. Cute. <laughs> and then you send some of them away to college. If you know what I mean. Oh, uh, number 13, Train Life. I was going to say you sent them to a farm, but you're already on a farm. So that's oh, kind yeah, of, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Number 13 was Train Life, a, a railway simulator for PlayStation and Xbox. Curious what that means. Because it's not like train simulator. A it's railway simulator. Life. Does that mean like your hobo style train, train riding? I don't know. There's a lot of train simulators. There are. There's, I mean, Train Simulator being the premier one, if we're being, yeah, if we're being snobby about our train simulators. There's a few though. I feel like there is a uh, unusually high number for it being such a uh... game on rails. <laughs> oh, for such a <laughs> a niche. Oh, I hate myself. Thing, hobby or interest or trains. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. Are there less farming simulators than train simulators? That would be interesting, because train simulators have been around longer, for sure. And do you consider stuff like Stardew Valley a farming simulator? Because that, that skews the numbers immediately. I would not. Because you're on a farm, 
Yeah, but you don't it's, have to technically. Yeah, but it's not you can like be me and just fish the entire time. You talk to Willie down by the shore, you fish. I feel like it's a farming simulator if the point is to farm. Okay. So farming simulator adjacent. Yes. It's a it's a uh, story RPG where you happen to farm. Yeah. Where you can farm. Yeah. If you yeah, choose yeah. to. And number 14, DreamWorks Dragons, Legends of the Nine Realms for the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. And number 15, Tales of Tomorrow, Experiment for the PC. Where's our dragon simulators? To simulate being a dragon? I don't know, maybe. Being a dragon, raising dragons. What do you do other than sit on a pile of gold and torture local Listen, there's a job simulator. Uh, Fair enough. (laughs) You know what? There's a simulator for everything now. I want to be in VR, though, because I want to fly in and light the entire town on fire with my mouth. That's fair. That's fair. Maybe the simulator is you go around collecting your hoard. You got to be careful, though, because if I get too immersed, I'm going to switch out my bed for a giant pile of coins. Yeah. Gotta and just sleep in that. Get the method acting, kind of. Exactly, exactly. The same way that every now and then, I run around with a battle axe and pretend I'm an orc. I've seen it. But me not that kind of orc. (laughs) Zug zug. (laughs) All right. Ladies, I can send pictures if you'd like. It is what I do, (laughs) Zogosh. I think good. Uh, You you feeling odds or evens this week? I'm feeling pretty odd. (laughs) I lost my mind over five minutes in. Uh, Uh, I'll do odds. Why not? All right. I mean, what's the worst that happens, right? Number one, Overwatch 2 lead hero designer Jeff Goodman has left Blizzard. First reported by PC Gamer, the longtime Blizzard employee decided to leave the company earlier this year, according to a statement from Blizzard to The Verge. Blizzard's full response reads, quote, We thank Jeff for his many years of service at Blizzard and wish him all the best. His ability to bring life to Overwatch's diverse hero roster Excuse me. Through gameplay has been incredible, and the mark he's left on the Warcraft and Overwatch teams will be felt for years to come. The loss of Overwatch 2's lead hero designer is an ironically timed blow, as a few short days ago, Kiriko, the game's 35th hero, was revealed. And Overwatch 2 is out in the first week of October. That seems to be like flying under the radar. It doesn't have like the hype that. It used to. Yeah, I don't think it will until it kind of... I think it's going to be a quiet release Mm -hmm. in terms of, like, ad space and stuff. Yeah. It'll get it the week after. Yeah. But their primary thing is Wrath of the Lich King is Tuesday, or Monday night Mm -hmm. slash Tuesday. And then the week after that is supposed to be Overwatch time. So... You you can't you gotta you gotta pick when you do your things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I get what you're saying because then you're you're overshadowing wrath, which yes. And Diablo is supposed to be soon after, or well, I say soon after. It's supposed to be this year as well. So like, or no, it's not. They delayed it. Never mind. Which is weird to me because this is we're off topic, but this doesn't come up later at this point. They had a, um, they're still running betas on it. Like, they're, it's in beta. Yeah, or maybe they didn't delay it. I don't remember. I, yeah, I they did a friends attention. and family beta. Yeah, because that's where the stuff leaked from. Yeah. Um, I haven't been, like, horribly paying attention because it's one of those, okay, cool, when it comes out, it comes out. I'm not, mm-hmm. not grinding my teeth for it like I am other things. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. All right, number two, Valve has launched a new Steam Charts section on its marketplace to give better insight into the best-selling and highest-earning hits. The section replaces the old stats page on Steam and features real-time rankings for the top sellers and most played games, as well as a weekly chart and monthly overview of the top new releases. Valve said the, the aim is to, quote, get a more complete picture of which games players are excited about getting into and continuing to play. End quote. Uh, they have a new way of um, of uh, determining top sellers now as well that they go into and talk all about, but it's no one gives a shit. Basically, they're 
they're lumping a game's DLC and ex- and extra content in with its normal purchase. So it it makes sense. Sure. I mean, could skew a couple things, but it makes sense. Yeah. It, uh, it it's good to see. It's good to see a a relook at stats of data and data mm-hmm. of those things where you're like, how is whatever still blah blah blah, and it's like, well, because yeah. actually the DLC has been keeping it afloat, which doesn't show it. So they did say that when if a game's DLC does start to sell like Boo-hoo. an abnormal holy amount, they'll they'll pull it aside as like a separate tile. So you'll see it separately. Yeah. But they didn't give any any data points as far as like when that happens. Destiny 2. Yeah. When the new season or whatever expansion launches, that'll be the one. Number 3 YouTuber Jason Gastro, better known as Video Game Donkey or simply Donkey, has announced the launch of his indie publishing company, Big Mode. Dunkey has been a YouTuber for over a decade, with his channel currently garnering 7 million subscribers and billions of views. In the video announcing Big Mode, he explained that his experience as a YouTuber is what gives him a good understanding of the types of games players want, with the publishing label aiming to be as developer-friendly as possible. Quote, I've been on YouTube for 11 years now, and none, or sorry, and one of the core themes of my channel has always been to slam dunk soulless cash <laughs> what core themes of my channel has always been to slam dunk soulless ca- soulless cash grabs into the garbage can and lift up and praise the truly inspired works of art in this medium just for the record slam and dunk are on two different lines in the doc so that's where that confusion <laughs> came from for me oh like it that's where it's it, it split it's, the line for you? It's slam and then dunk on the next line. Oh. So I was like, oh, it's not a slam dunk. He's slam dunk. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, continuing the quote. For years and years, I have always sought out the very best indie games out there and have tried to do them justice, putting millions of eyes on the games that actually deserve attention. He added that Big Mode, which he is co-founding with his wife, YouTuber Leah, Leah B. Gastro, will be a harmonious continuation of his own channel. Donkey added that he's not looking for a creative control via Big Mode, but does want to be involved in development. Developers can already get in touch to submit their games with Big Mode clarifying that it does not accept games that use NFTs, crypto, or blockchain. So get wrecked, nerds. <laughs> uh, interesting. Yeah, it's a publishing arm, so I'm kind of like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's Sure, is it cool to see a YouTuber everybody knows get into the actual industry side of things. Yeah. But it's a publishing arm, not a developing arm. So you're kind of just like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, reading, like going into it more, it sounds like he, he's always, he wants to do what we always talk about doing, which is essentially, yes, that's a good idea. No, that's a terrible idea. Yeah. That's a good one here. Do this. And it should make it a little bit better. Cause that's basically where he he goes into into depth about being like, I don't want to tell you how to make your game. I just know what ideas are good and what ideas are bad. Yes, let let me help uh, a publishing consultant at the same time, yeah. basically. Mm. But yeah, unfortunately, he has the billions of uh, monies to do it, and we don't. Yep, good for him. Make us proud. Uh... Don't fail me. <laughs> you were the chosen one. You're supposed to lead us from the darkness. Not join them. Uh, number four, CD Projekt Red reports that Cyberpunk 2077 has received a recent boost in its player count, with one million people playing on a daily basis. The figure was announced via the game's official Twitter account, where CD Projekt Red noted that it is a mix of new and returning players, adding, quote, We wanted to use this opportunity to thank you for being with us and playing the game, end quote. While the studio did not specifically state the cause for the spike in players, it is believed to be a combination of two things. The recent debut of Cyberpunk Edge Runners, an anime spin-off for Netflix produced by CD Projekt and Japanese animation studio Trigger, and the accompanying Edge Runners update to the game, which introduced a number of fixes, new features, and cross-save progression between platforms. I have not watched the new anime. Probably won't. Well, didn't you also ditch Netflix? 
I did, but I'm still. Oh yeah, until you run out. Yeah. yeah. Um. I have heard really good things about it and seen. Generally, you can tell, like, so I, I, I'm on a, a couple different anime subreddits, obviously. Um, yep. <laughs> and you can generally tell if an anime is well-received if you see it, like, clips of it posted a lot or, like, whatever. Oh, so it's the reverse of how I would normally treat that theory, which means it's probably bad. Yeah. I mean, it's usually one of... T- it's either It's either a good anime. <laughs> yeah. Or it's so cringy bad. Right, which is which mm-hmm. is where when you start seeing certain game things, it's yeah. like, oh man, either these are all really good shots or it's, oh my God, look how bad this is. Yeah, but usually in anime, it's easier to tell because cringy anime is distinct from good anime. True. <laughs> so there's, a, there's one clip that I keep, I keep seeing going around that's pretty spectacular and it's basically this, the, I'm assuming the main character. Um, <laughs> riding a uh, what the hell is it called? Um, a stretcher. Uh, out of an ambulance with a guy on it, oh, going okay. down the highway, and you know it's it's just a crazy, crazy scene animated and looking all vaporware-ish. So. Yeah, good animation yeah. at least. I mean, I've I haven't seen anybody complain about it. I've seen people say some good things, but I haven't seen like many people talk about it. So I'm figuring it was just more of a it exists kind of thing. Yeah, it kind of does. That's kind of the issue. It does exist, and I think a lot of people who aren't necessarily a lot of like anime snobs are probably going to turn their nose up to it. They they probably are, but I also feel like a bunch of people that were cyberpunk mm-hmm. two years ago, whatever, when it launched, are now kind of like yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, they they don't care. It's only the people that are the Lawrences of that world that are like, give me it. Yeah. Yeah. They think Johnny Silverhand is the second coming of Christ or something. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Yeah. But hey, it exists. Number five. Logitech has entered the high-end handheld gaming space with the unveiling of a games streaming service device. What? With a game streaming device that launches next month. The Logitech G Cloud Gaming Handheld features a 7-inch high-definition touchscreen with a 60 hertz refresh rate, plus all the joysticks, buttons, triggers, and inputs you'd expect from modern gaming devices. It will arrive on October 17th and is priced at $350 with an introductory offer of $300 available to consumers in the U.S. and Canada. The G Cloud will come with pre-installed shortcuts to cloud gaming services, including Xbox Cloud Gaming and NVIDIA GeForce Now. Users will require a subscription to those services. It will also feature Steam Link and Xbox Remote Play apps, allowing consumers to stream games from their PC or Xbox console. The device requires a Wi-Fi connection, with Logitech claiming on the official product page that it will support graphics of up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. The um, editorial, the quick editorial note, okay. I meant I didn't do it, but I had meant to put high-end handheld in quotations. Ah, yes, okay. I, I read it in quotations. Yes. Because it's not a thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> quick no, by the way. Okay. All right. More don't, notes. Don't buy this. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to spend $350 on have, a, I, I have, some I have, sort of handheld I have, device. I, say, I have two immediate problems with it, but go ahead. <laughs> my, I have two immediate problems with it, too. And it's called a Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck. Yeah. So I combine those into one problem. Which is that this is a fucking cloud gaming thing? And, well, no, it's the, both of those exist. That's problem one. Yeah. And problem two, which specifically is more of the issue of the Steam Deck, because the Switch is irrelevant in this conversation only because this doesn't give you Nintendo things either. Yeah. Uh, but the Steam Deck exists, and your price point's ridiculous. Yeah, that's what I I didn't make the realization until just now that I'm ignoring the 
two ninety nine because I I hate yes. that they do that stuff. Early the adopter, Steam Deck, early adopter fees. Yeah, the Steam Deck is three ninety nine for the cheapest variant, yeah. and it performs the same. It's just a smaller memory. It's just but everything's on the machine. Yeah, so it's not you don't need a Wi Fi connection to play. Yeah, so like if you're looking to cloud play anything on the cloud, just get a Steam Deck. Yeah, if you're looking for a good handheld, you get the Steam Deck. Get the Steam Deck or get the Switch. Yeah, depending on which library of games you yeah. have. Dumb, dumb, dumb device. I mean, it's one of those where you go, okay, good to see a competitor. But it's competing in a weird way. It's like trying to play a similar game, but with its own rules. And people are like, what, what are you doing? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And it seems... They're playing, with, they're playing with, Pong with house rules. Unless there's some like weirdness with the like, if there's something special about the device, I don't understand why they think it w- warrants it, why it's worth three hundred and fifty dollars. Like that's, yeah. All right, number six: a YouTuber has been exposed as the source of leaks around Ubisoft Forward after applying from the wrong Twitter account. He got himself. Ahead of Ubisoft's represent, <laughs> ahead of Re- Ubisoft's presentation last week, a Twitter account under the name The Real Insider shared details of the Assassin's Creed games that were due to be announced. The same account had previously been used to leak information around the rebooted Saints Row and Metal Hellsinger, among other titles. However, the anonymity of the account's owner, Dan Allen, ended when he replied to a tweet to at the real insider via his at Dan Allen gaming account. Allen has been briefed, uh, had been briefed by Ubisoft on the Assassin's Creed announcements ahead of the forward presentation under the condition that he adhere to the embargo. He then broke that embargo by anonymously sharing the details via his real insider account. The tweet that exposed him and the real insider account has been deleted as has his at Dan Allen gaming account. Prior to its deletion, Alan posted an apology. Which, not going to repeat here, because it's a the normal, like, oh, I'm ashamed of my actions. I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. This is why you can't, why we can't have nice things. Yeah. You know? Because people, Everyone's about that leaking. Everyone's leaking everywhere. So yeah. Clean stop, up after yourself. Yeah, stop leaking. Plug your holes. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like the Hoover Dam out here. Just fucking cracking and leaking, and I don't know if the Hoover Dam's cracking and leaking, but it probably it is. is. It's pretty big. I was more. I was going for the. This is going to be a fucking reference. I was going for the image of when the when like it's the, releasing. The, no, no. Okay. Well, there's that. That's a fun image <clears throat> to think about, but in a different context. The <laughs> the swabs when you don't plug it good enough. <laughs> or. <laughs> the, the uh it's it's always the like whack-a-mole method mm-hmm. or i can't remember the cartoon but like i think it's like hit is like walks up and there's the hole in the dam so he puts his finger in it to stop it mm-hmm. and then it recreates another yeah, one like, mo- mo- yeah moves. and then all of a sudden he's got you like walk up and the guy's got like a toe in and trying to like it's like yeah you can't too many too many holes you're leaking stop it Number seven, though. Twitch will be changing its stance on gambling content next month following outcry over a scam involving a prominent streamer. The company shared a statement via Twitter acknowledging that gambling has been a big topic of discussion in the community. Uh, The new policy, which will come into effect on October 18th, will prohibit the streaming of any gambling sites that include slots, roulettes, or dice games that aren't licensed in the U.S. or other jurisdictions that provide sufficient consumer protection, end quote. Uh, let's just stick with the U.S. part of that, who also doesn't provide that great of consumer protection to begin with. Uh, did you see the what caused this whole, or what kicked off this? Uh, I did and didn't. I luckily am void of a lot of drama. Same. I saw, I read the headline, essentially, I, and I got did, the gist of I it. I did go for, like, a couple, uh, like, articles and stuff. Mm-hmm. Where people were like, "Oh, he he scammed, yada yada." He had an issue, and like some yeah. people, a bunch of people were posting like Discord messages that they had with the person or whatever. And I was yeah. like, "Oh, yeah, weird that you guys like." I would have been gone immediately. Yeah. 
I don't know what yep. that says about me, but if you come to me with a what sounds pretty clear like a gambling addiction, your answers are going to be seek help, stay away from me. Yeah. Wild. Twitch. <laughs> Crazy place. Speaking of Twitch, uh, <laughs> Twitch announced that it is downgrading the subscription revenue split it offers preferred streamers beginning next year. Twitch president Dan Clancy announced this change in a blog post saying the company offers a standard 50-50 share of revenues to streamers, but has for some time had a premium tier of partnered streamer, premium tier for partnered streamers that would receive a 70-30 split instead. Uh, The platform stopped offering these premium agreements more than a year ago. Uh, For streamers already on those deals, Clancy said they will earn a 70-30 revenue split on the first $100,000 $100,000 they earn uh, each year starting June 1st of 2023. And then the standard 50 50 revenue split after that. Clancy said 90% of streamers, quote, on standard agreements with premium subscription terms, end quote, don't earn enough to see a difference in their pay. Twitch also used the revenue drop to push streamers uh, more towards advertising suggesting they opt in to an ads incentive program that pays them, for example, $500 for running four minutes of ads each hour and streaming for 40 hours a month. Clancy also justified the change by talking about the cost of streaming video, saying Twitch parent Amazon charges external parties $1,000 for the equivalent of live streaming 200 hours of video to 100,000 concurrent users in a month. A lot to take in there. Do you want to start with the absolute bullshit that this is? You can you can go for it if you want to go for it. I'll do some quick some quick maths for you. Cause like, let's start at the bottom. We can start at the bottom. Cause like I as I was going through this, I was like, okay, that sucks, but classic business. And then it kept going down. I was like, that's not good. Yeah, yeah. It it's <laughs> it just of, gets it's, worse. It's, it's one of those. And it gets worse. Uh, yeah, well, it's... like, oh, hey, uh, everybody's been complaining on Twitch about, like, you guys take half of our pay. Mm-hmm. We're not saying you shouldn't take anything, but 50 50 is bullshit. And then they went, fine, we'll dock the top percent. And they're like, no, no, no that's not what we said. Yeah. We said, you're hurting all of us. Stop that. And so now, then they're like, okay, cool, and more ads, which, by the way, Twitch, I believe, gets a higher cut of, so Twitch is just pocketing more money now. Then, he says, Twitch parent Amazon charges external parties. You son of a stu- You're not an external party. You are owned by Amazon. Yeah, that's the thing. This is, this, this whole thing is basically... They just outlined Twitch's plan for how they plan on maneuvering in the future to make, they're making all of their streamers, they're going to start treating them like Amazon's external partners, essentially. So essentially, they're going to be providing you a service, and they're going to make everything more expensive, which what killed me the most was them trying to say that that this ad deal was a good deal. $500. For running four minutes of ads each hour f- for 40 hours a month. And you get $500 for that. I would make more money in a warehouse on a weekend for, yeah. for two shifts. That's no better than I could work a, a, a dead-end job and make that money. Like, people stream for a couple different reasons. But one of them is that it's a job. It's it's it pays a decent for some people at least, and at least there's a decent opportunity that if you you get good at it and you develop your skill as a streamer, you can make enough money to just provide for your family very comfortably, which I feel is fair. Yeah. Like, do people make a lot of money streaming? Yes. Do I think I could be a streamer? Absolutely not. And I'm like, that's cool. Do I think I could be a doctor? Probably not. They should make a decent amount of money. Like this, this is just like murdering. They're they're mur- essentially murdering the business. Yeah, 
this it it almost reads as a way that they wanted to keep like that this should have been an internal post. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this reads like a bunch of executives in a boardroom having the conversation of like how they how they want to work. You know what it this out. reminds me of? This reminds me of of what YouTube is doing but didn't tell us they were doing. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> this is very much like what sounds like an executive boardroom committee meeting happened, and somebody like took the notes of it and wrote it all down and went, okay. Hmm. And then they forgot the part where they had, and this never leaves this room. Yeah. They're like, all right, so how do we turn this business in such a way that we can leech off of all of the people that stream? Yeah. And they're like, all right, step one, no more 70-30 split. Everyone's 50-50. All right, step two. Let's push everyone to ads. Step three, we'll tell them it's a good thing because we charge everyone else this much money to do this thing. Yeah. And we're going to double down on the fact that it's really expensive to do what we do. Yeah. While owned by the server farm. Yeah. (laughs) Owned by, what is it, 70% of the internet? Yeah. So it's like, okay. There, there's part of me that wonders if Microsoft's just kind of looking over at Mixer going, well, we could turn it back on. I mean, if Mixer was still around, they wouldn't be doing this. No, but that's what I mean. Like, they could, I, I guarantee they probably still have everything registered. Oh, yeah. To the point where Microsoft could be like kind of going. I mean, they probably still have the infrastructure, still have everything sitting there. And just, ah, well, oh, we don't, we can't use Mixer anymore. I won't just change. Snake mixer with two r's at the end or something <laughs> yeah and, and mixers they, yeah and they just change it so like they would just rewrite all their dialogues so it's like okay there's no gambling on here there's no hot tub streams it's all in our legal binding you know like none of ev- everything that anybody's complained about uh, no this is yeah. we're not doing irl streams this is just video game you can if you want irl you can stay on twitch but this is just video game stuff yeah or do something weird and just it, i don't know I yeah, know. I mean, this is just further proof to me that, like, in that sphere, which, in my mind, YouTube and Twitch are, like, the sa- in that same sphere, we need, like, more competition. But that's kind of one of those things where it's, like, they're too big to, like, you lit- the that running joke that, like, oh, who's the best person to compete against YouTube? Oh, it's Pornhub. And it's like that's not really a joke. That's like no, it's like if it's, Pornhub rebranded or 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 did something, they people would probably be like, "All right, yeah, let's do this." Like, yeah, can't wait till I'm watching Call of Duty Modern Warfare two beta streams on on Pornhub. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Catch my WoW Dragonflight stream on Pornhub come end of November. <laughs> Uh, where he will be? Can, can you imagine? Painted if I, green. Can you imagine if I could only do that? covered by a battle axe? Can you, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if I could, like, I <laughs> could stream on the hub? Uh, like if I signed up for an account and just streamed World of Warcraft on the hub, how fast do you think I could get an article written about me? Probably pretty quick. Like, oh, check even out this, more. Check out this guy who's just streaming on the hub and he's playing World of Warcraft. And that's it. That's all I do. <laughs> there you go. Like, oh, I didn't want to use Twitch. I'm using the hub instead. <laughs> I'm surprised. All right. So you know how there's the, the anime character girl or guy or whatever it is? Not, I'm not convinced it's a girl. Are you talking about the VTuber? The VTubers. Oh, okay. v- there's VTubers. Has anyone? You're, are you? Don't. Uh, I'm, I'm so scared for what you're No, it's, it's not that bad. Okay. Has anyone done it for World of Warcraft characters? Because I think it'd be really funny if you were streaming oh, like WoW. A v, like a VTube rig of a WoW character? Yeah. Like if you, if were, you were your character? Yes. There it is. God, I wonder how much that rig would be. That would be interesting. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I might look into that. I think it's uh, fucking... Because I think it would be fucking hysterical to do it as my boomkin. Just that <laughs> giant fucking feather chicken. That's what that I'm has, saying. That has no emotions to begin with, and you're just... Talk <laughs> all this the entire time. <laughs> be great. Uh, we'll have to look into that. It'd be great because I think, like, I think a bunch of VTubers. I don't know about all of them, but I think some some of them use voice modulators, mm-hmm. and I just don't. Yeah, I mean, that would. I'm be, just out there like, yeah, what's up? That'd be part of the allure, though. It's like you'd get like the, I'm a chicken. <laughs> I'm a weird chicken. 
just have it set so like when I'm casting certain spells, you just see my feather arms come up above my head and just. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, there's got to be like there's software that has that body a... track you and stuff. I'm assuming. So. Yeah, yeah. So I just have a full a rig of a boom kit mo- modded to me, yeah. and it's just. <laughs> Dabbing boomkins. <laughs> People would love it. Oh, yeah. If I could have that set by November and take a week off of work, I would 100% VTube stream Dragonflight launch as a boomkin or whatever. Yeah. 100%. We'll look into that. I'll look into it tonight. I don't we'll give a do, shit. We'll do some research on that. You told me a good idea that I can actually immediately leverage and don't need millions of dollars for, so... <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then I could just be it. I could be the High Mountain Torrent. I could be Ebonhorn and just be walking around, just doing the whole the tragedy at Camp Taraho and doing that <laughs> whole thing, and I'd just be in it. Be great. Imagine what cutscenes would look like. You get a <laughs> cutscene, and you could, and you you could like put you could put characters in it. Like, well, yeah, but it's just a cutscene happening. And it's just my character as the chicken, just going. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> It'd be great. Stream would look amazing because there'd be a cutscene going on in the stream. And then you'd be there in the corner, just like the oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm over here. No, I'm over here. Who's that guy that looks exactly <laughs> like me? <laughs> uh, at number nine, at a fireside chat hosted by none other than Winston Churchill during GI Live London. Too soon. Sony's Shuhei Yoshida, now head of India PlayStation, previously president of Sony Worldwide Studios, discussed the Japanese company's approach to releasing premium titles. Yoshida explained that Sony still prefers to keep these games out of subscription services, like its own PlayStation Plus. Weird. Uh, Until they enter a so-called life cycle management phase. Quote, in the same kind of way, we believe in the premium release of a title at launch, and after maybe six months or three months or three years, those are three wildly different speculations, by the way. (laughs) The Uh, next part's the key. uh, When the game's sales come down, inclusion into this service, PlayStation Plus Extra, can help introduce these games to new, broader audiences. Some people might have missed these games when they came out, and it's a great chance to play and generate word of mouth, or if there's DLC or a sequel coming out, we can help elevate interest into a broader audience about the franchise. So we are encouraging publishers to make use of these services in managing the life cycle of each title, end quote. So, hey, if your game sucks in like three months, we'll throw it on the free thing and see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Life cycle But management. in three years, we'll just remake your game. And not put it on the free service. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just remake, remake it, remaster it, whatever. Yeah. We'll put the old one on the, on the service. We'll remake it. So you have to buy that one. Then we'll put that one on the service. And then we'll remake it again. Oh, yeah. That's the last of us. You like remakes on your remakes? Because I got part four for you. God. Number 10, former PlayStation executive Sean Layden has joined Tencent. Oh, there it is. As her strategic advisor. Announcing the move on LinkedIn, Layden said he is to, quote, advise, assist, and support the team at Tencent as they deepen their activities and commitments within the industry, end quote. He added, we are an epoch, we are at an epoch of defining moment in gaming and interactive entertainment. There are many possible roads ahead, but only a few are profound, broadening, inclusive, edifying, inspiring, and or sustainable. I am thrilled to continue this journey of discovery and thank Tencent for the opportunity. End quote. After leaving Sony in 2019, after decades at the company, Layden joined the advers- adversary <laughs> advisory board of Streamline Media Group. <laughs> Honestly, an among a variety of other great. consultants. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I think this is his first uh, real big dip into Coming video back, games. Yeah. Again, yeah, it went ten cent. Yeah, of Damn. all people, it'll be interesting. That will be inter- interesting. I do like the idea, though. I know you screwed up, but I would love the idea of an adversary board. <laughs> I don't know what it means. 
<laughs> is it just a board of your adversaries that get together to determine how to fight you? Like, is that, uh, is that a thing? Maybe it's a board that just fights people. Like, just picks fights. Ah, they're just, yeah, a bunch of adversaries. They just pick fights with each other. It's one of those type of things. Not only do they pick fights with other people, they also infight. You know what? I know it's completely irrelevant to this. That's most things here. In my head canon, I like the idea that he did this purposefully because Tencent, I don't know if you've noticed, but the past couple of years, Tencent and PlayStation have invested in either the same companies or similar companies, or basically, long, long story short, is they have both companies, Sony and PlayStation, have investments in a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Sometimes the same exact companies. Yeah. So uh, if he's just trying, if he's like sneaking in, he's just that, or he's just like, I will crush you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that one. Just yeah. new. <laughs> uh, number 11, Rockstar Games suffered a major leak last weekend. A user on GTA forums posted links to 90 in development video clips of Grand Theft Auto 6. The authenticity of the clips was apparently confirmed when YouTube videos were taken down by copyright claims from Rockstar parent company Take Two Interactive. The clips varied greatly in level of completion from monochrome dummies walking around a gray box to more completed scenarios like a holdup in a diner and subsequent escape. The poster who leaked the videos, Teapot Uber Hacker, which, if you're going to go with an online name, Teapot Uber Hacker is right up there. Uh, said they were downloaded from Rockstar's internal Slack channel, and some of the videos do have the default Slack notification noise appearing sporadically over the videos. They also said it was possible they could leak GTA 5 and GTA 6 source code and assets, as well as a build of GTA 6. Some things to quick mention, obviously the leak was legit. Many devs rallied around Rockstar devs to give support, which has been entertaining because uh, there are a bunch of people saying, like, ah, oh, it looks like shit or whatever. And people saying, oh, the graphics are the first thing that are finished in a video game. And then everybody sharing, all the devs sharing images of, like, first runs at everything. And it's like, they're not, you know, no, you literally don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. Yep. Uh, people were criticizing to say, wow, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Various entities. <laughs> I didn't even read that before I went into my own thing. Well, I didn't want to write everything I out. Know. So this is basically just cliff notes to like jog our memories of things. Uh, various entities are investigating the leak, including the FBI, because it is really believed that uh, Uber is also involved. The hack is, uh, yep. And a 17-year-old in the UK was arrested by London police. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in coordination with the UK National Cybercrime Unit, a journalist, Matthew Keyes, said a source with knowledge of the matter told him the arrest stemmed from the Rockstar Games hack. Did you look at any of this stuff? The I saw the diner video. That was it. I didn't look at anything. I I, I wasn't diner video was all over my Twitter. It was the only one that I saw really. Yeah, I mean it's I don't I don't people. I have a weird opinion of like this leak because like people are like jazzed about it. To be fair. Probably not that weird here. True, that's true. And I just like was just like okay. And it literally all it did was confirm everything that was already rumored. Yep. The two protagonists, one being a female, Vice City, blah 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 blah. And then like I'm like, all right, that's cool. And then like it's like, you know, what else is there to know? But then what got me was the what you mentioned, the people being like, Oh, it looks like shit. And yeah. I'm like do you not know how video games made? Yeah, it's a uh, mix of do you not know how video games work, which yes, uh, yes is the answer, uh, followed by <laughs> it's Rockstar. Yeah. What are you worried about? Yeah. 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 I mean, actually, I talked to uh, one of my coworkers who did went, he did watch a few of the videos and. I I was like, you know, I, I asked them, like, what they look like. And then he was like, he told me. And then I was like, hey. I was like, oh, so you see a lot of, like, what's happening behind the scenes with the game engine and stuff like that. Yeah. He's like, yeah, at certain points, you know, you'll see where, like, you know, like, the, the cones of detection are. And, like, just, the you know, all the behind the scenes stuff. And I'm like, that makes it more interesting. It makes me want to watch it. Because then you can see, like, the way they design things, essentially. And, um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's not. It's just it's 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 neat in one sense because you do get to peek inside behind the curtain. You get to peek behind the curtain, but 
you know, other than that, like, sucks for them. Yeah, it sucks for them. Nobody ever, you don't ever want a leak like that to happen. Yeah. Especially for something like GTA 6. Yeah, exactly. That is a monolith of the gaming community. You Neil Druckmann it. was one of the people that immediately was tweeting at Rockstar and, and, and the devs and stuff was like, hey, I know it seems rough now, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And it's just one of those where it's shitty because you have a bunch of idiots, which as far as I'm concerned, so that happened, what, Saturday, Sunday, and then a little bit into Monday, Tuesday, Mm -hmm. but then nothing. Yeah. We're a week later and I don't really hear it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like the most recent thing was three days later. They're like, oh, people are investigating. And then that was kind of it. Yep. Because, yeah, I mean, there's you got other things to worry about. The leaks don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially yep, yep. for what they were. They weren't like when we got the uh, some of the Halo leaks, like the ba- the Battle Pass stuff and whatever. Mm-hmm. Where it's like that will actually affect like money things. This is just, okay, it's what the single player game looks like. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think if anything, it's just uh, another example of you know we live in like you you kind of need to have your shit on lockdown like we yeah with all the work from home and basically working over network and and working over in in cloud and and all that nonsense it's like you kind of you got to be a little bit more airtight than you might have been able to get away with before yep and then you know nothing no security is perfect so you kind of got to take that into account as well yep like i don't know if if having development videos on a slack channel is necessarily a great idea no that i i don't i can't see the reason why you would do it so yeah but hey what do i know i'm not a dev same i don't don't fucking know anything all right number 12 NVIDIA took the lid off their next-generation graphics card this week. Uh, Let's do a quick little overview. Not going to get too deep. Don't worry. Not going to get too nerdy. Oh, Uh, my God. Here we go. (laughs) This architecture design is called Ada Lovelace, continuing their theme of naming after scientists, and will encompass the RTX 4000 series cards. NVIDIA is claiming two times to four times performance of previous gen. Now, keep in mind, that's what they are claiming. They announced three specific cards. RTX 4090 for $1,600. RTX 4080 16GB for $1,200. And RTX 4080 12GB for $900. Uh, they also announced a suite of new features and softwares. That are designed to work with the new series like DL- DLSS 3, RTX Remix, which is really interesting, Shader Execution Reordering, and AV1 Dual Encoders. Power and size is going to be a problem for various reasons if you can afford to get it in the first place. Uh, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang said, quote, Moore's Law is dead. And the ability for Moore's Law to deliver twice the performance at the same cost or the same performance at half the cost every year and a half is over it's completely over and so the idea that the chip is going to go down in cost over time unfortunately is a story of the past end quote um and then amd decided to cut prices on their existing gpu lineup the next day and their new lineup is expected to be announced november 3rd um the controversy with the nvidia cards is obviously they're expensive really expensive and even accounting for inflation, they're more expensive than their previous gen counterparts at various generations. But the big controversy is the the two forty eighties. They follow the same name, but the lower memoried uh, card is also a cut down GPU. So it's essentially um, what probably was supposed to be the forty seventy. That they just decided to get shisty with naming. Which shocking nobody. Yeah. Which upon further inspection of the of the specs, it's memory uh b- uh bus and um what was the other thing? 
there's a couple different specs on the spec sheet that generally you would find those in a 4060 or a 60 series not a 70 so it's like even it's weird so we'll see it was very much a okay cool they got it officially announced and then i went fuck for multiple okay your price is outrageous your the everything you just said about the two cards doesn't make sense and scares me and i'm like all right i there's a solid chance now looking at these that depends on when the when the review copies actually go out and whatever there's a solid chance that it is not worth it for me to wait for the seven the 4070 because i won't pay for a 4080 yeah not at these prices no not at these prices <laughs> absolutely not it based just extrapolating i don't from think that, you'd see a 4070 until next year anyways yeah i don't think you'd see one until next year and i think you'll see it at 700 dollars minimum mm-hmm. what no not doing that either so I'm look. I'd be looking at thirty series then, just being like, absolutely. I'm not playing your game. No. Yeah, I mean they those prices on them have fallen so crazy now that yeah. I mean, really, the only hope is that what AMD comes out with is competitive enough to push prices down. But going by previous generations, the odds of that happening are pretty. Yeah, they're almost slim. Almost almost unbelievably slim, and even then. They would have to push prices down and be almost equal in performance, and it's like you're gonna be you'd have to be you'd have to be showing up. Yeah, I mean, mm, it's it's a tough one. It's definitely a tough one. I mean, the thing with this one is that I I'm skeptical. I'm really skeptical, especially about their performance numbers too. I think I think they will be very good with ray tracing. Yeah, I think but, I, st- I think they'll still be very good video cards, just by definition of a very mm-hmm. good video card. But I, I think, think the price for performance is not going to be there. If not you're even just, close. If you're just playing like normal rasterized games like WoW or uh, Call of Duty is your Call barrier. of Duty. Call of Duty or, is your, should be your like baseline. Yeah, then you, there's not. It'll probably be like if you're lucky on a like two two times better. But even then, I doubt it because that's like that's the, crazy. They keep seemingly. M- <laughs> at least to me anyway, with like this 40 release, seeming like they wanted to push it closer and closer to being like a quadro card. Yeah. And it's like, you, if you just want to make it a quad, just make it a quadro card then. That was also interesting. Is and the software up. that they were talking about, DLSS 3, was whatever. It's another version of DLSS. It's a little bit different this time because it's going to be fucking making up its own frames instead of... Yeah. But the... RTX Remix was kind of crazy. I don't know if you saw that at all. Not it's really. essentially like a blanket. It's essentially like a one-click mod. So it, you can take a game, throw in an RTX Remix. It'll look at the game and retexture it, insert ray tracing, and do all that nonsense. So like they, what they showed was a demo of like Morrowind that they threw through RTX Remix, they... and like. They port. showed a game from 2007. That's so what RTX Remix does basically is like you know how you can do all the like Skyrim's the big one or like whatever where you yeah. can a- amp the graphics up. Yeah. Using mods. Yeah. yeah. This is a one stop, one click. Oh, like okay. I can create essentially a mod for yeah. for a game. And then the shader execution reordering is nerdy stuff but it's essentially like but still it's all sounding like the bougiest of shit yeah that's and they seem to be aiming towards like well they kind of said it they're all about ai now yeah and it's so like, like they're going they're almost going towards software yeah and it's like all right well if you're just gonna do that then i'm just gonna go buy a 30 series and be done with it i've already looked at pricing out a uh, motherboard and cpu mm-hmm. to potentially do the flip before dragonflight release yeah yeah, I don't know. I it'll be it'll be interesting because I still don't think my graphics. I think my graphics card is still fine with absolutely no issues. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially when your your priority right now is WoW. Then yeah, and I don't think you have to worry about like the thirty series cards are going to be around for a long time. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure pretty soon I can just walk into a store here and buy one. I know I can walk into other stores places and get them. Yeah. So, 
All right, let's get through some questionable things we didn't really write full paragraphs on. Number one, full paragraph. Blizzard has <laughs> <laughs> Blizzard has released a new Journey trailer for the imminent release of the Wrath of the Lich King expansion for WoW Classic, and it's something special. The video was put together by Hurricane, a YouTuber, YouTuber? YouTuber who specializes in making WoW trailers and has been doing so for many years. But they've always been a fan creator, someone known by the community, but independent. And this is their first commission from, from Blizzard. Did you watch it? I did. Yeah, I did too. It is very cool. I liked it. Player I, focused. Yeah, I was a big fan. They had some people, uh, some of the characters that are in there were from uh, the World of Warcraft Twitter accounts, uh, Mog Monday they do. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, show us your outfits or whatever. And I yeah. believe some of them made it into the video according to what they said. I like the idea of them doing that. I think that would be a cool trend to set where they... If they did like every expansion or whatever, they did a cinematic trailer and then also had like a fan created trailer. Yeah. Be neat. Agreed. Number two, EA has announced that an Iron Man game is in development at EA Motive. The project will be a third person single player action adventure game telling an original story that taps into the rich history of Iron Man, channeling complexity, charisma, and creative genius. Tony Stark. Woohoo. Number three, <laughs> AFC Richmond, the fictional club from Ted Lasso, will be playable in FIFA 23. The team will be available in a handful of modes, including a career mode. Number four, Sonic Prime, Netflix's upcoming anima- animated series, will be released sometime in winter 22, according to a new teaser trailer. Which is all of what? One month, right? <laughs> Just December? So sometime. One would think. Although. Usually when they say that type of thing, winter 2022, they're... Quarter. Yeah, they're doing the whole fiscal thing. Uh, Number five. The Department of Homeland Security has awarded a grant of nearly $700,000 towards the research and prevention of extremism in video games. The funding will go towards a program that will create resources for monitoring, evaluating, and preventing extremist activities in gaming spaces. End quote. Numbers. I think that has been misconstrued by... Some headlines I've seen. Yes. I would like, oh, they want to stop extremism in gaming. It's like, no, no, no. They're not saying GTA doesn't need to exist. They're saying stop using Discord for terrorist attacks. Yeah. Those those are two different things. Number six, the PlayStation VR 2 headset won't work with the original PlayStation VR games. Weird. It is interesting. But I would, I would just weird. It is weird because I'd expect it to go the other way. Obviously the PS1 headset can't run the PS2 games. Not. Yeah. I think it's weird. I think it's them just saying it's not worth building in compatibility because there would have to be basically like, they'd have to make like an off switch on some of the features essentially for the headset. True. Number seven, CEO of gaming, Phil Spencer. Confirmed that Xbox is still open to more mergers and acquisitions. And I'm going to potentially ruin myself already. Uh, Tell me to read some of these. No. Uh, 21 of them. After I do the next one. Uh, Might be getting ahead of myself, or I guess technically you now. Did you see the Microsoft CEO? Oh, God, what's his name? Uh, Satya. Satya Ned, Ned. Something with an N. N A D. Yes. Nadia? Oh, God, that bugged me. But they were doing an interview, I think with Bloomberg, maybe. I know what you're talking about, but it's not in here. They were talking about Sony's complaining about competition, and they've bought just as much as we have. So let us have competition then. (laughs) And I'm like, yes, drop daggers. If they want to play, you punch them in the face. I like that. They're not allowed to bitch and complain and then keep buying up people. The the thing I saw from it was that he basically was like, yeah, I'm, uh, he basically was like, yeah, I'm, I'm positive the the at Sony uh, the um Activision Blizzard acquisition is going to go through. Yeah. yeah, and then I think when pressed about it, or whatever, he's like, the main people arguing about it are Sony, and they just keep buying people. So, <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, number eight, Apple will raise <laughs> prices for all iOS apps and in-app purchases for all territories using the euro currency as well as a handful of other countries. Take that. 
Oh, the old inflation uh, excuse, you know? Number nine, Game Studios Digital Confectioners has received an investment from conglomerate Tencent. Founded in 2007 and based out of New Zealand, the company has developed titles such as Dread Hunger, Last Tide, and Depth. Outsourcing oh, firm. We know depth. What? We know depth. Depth? Yeah. Oh, yeah, depth, yeah. It's the only one on that list we know. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, outsourcing firm Keyword Studios has entered an agreement to acquire game developer Smoking Gun, established in 2007. And based out of Vancouver, Canada, the company has released titles such as Age of Empires Castle Siege, Phobies, and Freefall Racers. 2K's customer support platform has been accessed by an unauthorized third party. 2K warned customers, I guess I should have put that in quotes, but whatever. 2K warned customers via message on Twitter that the unauthorized party sent a malicious link to some players and invited them, invited them to reset their passwords if they did click on the link. You silly people. Number 12, cheat maker Aim Junkies has filed a countersuit against Destiny 2 developer Bungie, arguing that Bungie broke the law by hacking into the personal laptop of James May, one of Phoenix Digital Group's managers, between 2019 and 2021. Uh, the suit also alleged that Bungie broke Aim Junkies' terms of service and violated the digital millennium. Copyright Acts, anti-circumvention provisions. Man, they're, that would be hysterical if they if they're <laughs> if that's right. Uh, they, like, I've, hey, we no, you're not allowed to cheat in our game. We sue you. Yeah, well, we sue you for illegally finding it out. That's basically what they're doing. <laughs> uh, the old um, glove didn't fit method. Yeah. Uh, tech and French number thirteen. Tech and franchise. It really, it really is. <laughs> Basically, I just love that on so many different levels too. Though that Bungie was just like, "Oh, we'll fucking find out. Don't you worry." And then like, hack them, and then and they're kind of thinking about how did they find out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Thirteen Tekken franchise lead Katsu Katsu Harada has said that current gen consoles are unfairly capable at their price point versus PC. You know what? After this past week of announcements, I can't argue with you. <clears throat> Number what? four. Are unfairly capable? Ver yeah. So he's saying that they outperform their price point compared to the PC. Yes. Okay. Which is funny, considering Sony raised their prices. Anyway. Yeah. They sure did. Number 14, a white Xbox Series X has been spotted in a new advert from Logitech for the new Astro A30 wireless headset. So, naturally, people are assuming there's one on the way. Number 15. You get yourself a white fridge. You could just, I don't know, and spray paint it white. <laughs> you, know, you know there's <laughs> definitely somewhere on their side that says, don't do that. Probably. Uh, number 15, Modern Warfare 2 beta on Steam brought in nearly 110,000 concurrent players. Not bad for a beta. 16, there's a rumor going around that the next WRC being developed by Codemasters will allow you to create your own cars. Now that's interesting. That is interesting. What do they mean? What do they mean? I'm assuming that there's going to be like one that's the width of the lane. <laughs> so I like I'm basically on a track. <laughs> I can't not make a turn because my wheels will just slam into it. I'm assuming they mean like, oh, here's a bunch of stock cars that yeah, you have available. Modify yeah. Modify them. But... Modify and spray paint. I like your idea better. Oh, yeah. No, I definitely I love my idea way more because I'm going to make like a slot car. Yeah. 17. Like an electric rally car that just goes. <laughs> That would be. I wonder though, if there's been like a a decent electric rally car. E rally. I know electric cars have been a thing in hill climb. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Yeah, they've been a thing in hill climb for sure. But yeah, I want to see a full off road e rally car, but I want it tuned because here's the thing: it's an electric car. You don't tune. You you just press the gas and it goes. Yeah. You know, it'd be interesting. At you most, know, there's a whine, but I want that. Yeah, the, audio file. That signifies as they're going around a corner that it's still doing all the RPMs. And oh, reps. yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the other fun feature that's in the GR Corolla. The audio? 
uh, you you can bang against the red, the red uh, red line. Oh, so you can bang against the red line and go, whoa, 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 you know, like the. Um, <laughs> can you imagine just sitting in a parking lot like McDonald's, <laughs> just, like like, in a, in a, just in the drive through? Yeah, can I get a? Can I get a? I don't, what do you want? Can I get a ten piece nugget? All right, yeah, first window. All right, sounds good. <laughs> just, he's just rumbling, sitting outside the thing. Um, you know the aerial Adam? Yeah, yeah. You know how there's the off road one? I think is it still called the aerial Adam, or is it something? Isn't else? it the Nomad at that point? The Nomad. Someone should take the aerial Nomad and make an electric version of it. Yeah, that'd be dope. Someone do that with money. I don't have money for that. The aerial Wally. <laughs> wow. 17 there's an indiegogo campaign for an improved version of the virtual memory unit for God, the sega I, dreamcast first off haven't heard that name in a long time indiegogo yeah followed by say okay all right now we're just the wild part is that it has surpassed its goal of eighty seven thousand dollars and is currently at one hundred and thirteen thousand with 15 days left I like that the first part wasn't the wild part that it existed. <laughs> uh, the thing's kind of nuts. Like they updated it where you it has a micro SD card slot, um, an updated screen, all this crazy That's... shit. People, Number eighteen. People are crazy. Leaker Tom Henderson has expressed concern about the state of the new Need for Speed entry from developer Criterion. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, I don't even know what you saw, but I'm there with you three Need for Speeds ago. <laughs> I've been Someone's com- finally on our page. <laughs> I've been complaining since the first re- the remake of Most Wanted. I'm right there with you. And you've seen it. Uh, 19. Star Citizen officially passes $500 million in crowdfunding with release nowhere in sight. I hate it here. The Splinter Cell remake from Ubisoft Toronto will feature a rewritten and updated story uh, according to a job description. It has to be used for being illicit, illicit activities at this point, right? I would assume. It has like, to it's be, gonna money, be like laundering. money laundering or yeah. something. I don't Has to be. How was it not investigated? I don't know. I thought it was at one point. Like, if the FBI is going to knock down anything, get in on that. $500 million and they still haven't come out with a fucking game. Like there's builds of it, obviously. We know there's builds of it. Yeah, we've seen builds of it. They've they've released builds of it, but they've never released like a complete game. Got it. I would the podcast that we get to lead with the FBI raided the Star Citizen offices. Holy shit. Uh and finally Ubisoft still sucks. Uh there's <laughs> <laughs> That's just our cliff note for the end of the episode every week now from here on out. Uh they're still treating their employees like garbage. Shocking. There was a whole thing on it, but it was the same stuff over and over again about how, like, everything we talked about before. Run it all back. They just haven't done anything about it. Well, in case you're curious what our thoughts are on that, listen to the previous episodes. There you go. But, hey, it's been uh, eight days. What have you been up to? Trying to not die. That's, That's about mean, it. Solid plan. I haven't even watched Andor yet, which came out. and. The beginning of this, or beginning of this week, I think Wednesday. I don't Wednesday know. It came out Wednesday. Three episodes drop Wednesday. Yeah, I haven't, I even... haven't watched any of that. But I'm three weeks behind on Rings of Power now. Yeah, I did watch Rings Rings of Power. I I just like fell behind because the first ones came out. I watched them on my day off. Then it was, uh, God, what was it? What ended up? Panning I mean, out? they drop on a Friday and they're fucking long. Yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they're, so they're like, normal, like, you know, hour long length, but I'm yeah. like, I have to like choose to sit down and watch that. And I kind of want to watch it. I don't want to just have it on. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I've just been like hanging out and, uh, I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even know if I've been, but just hanging out is like the perfect way to play games. You know what I mean? I know. And I, the whole time I'm like, man, there's really got to be something I could be playing right now. But like, a lot of it would require me to be at the, the my PC. computer, yeah. and me sitting at a computer was not happening. So I was just moving between the couch and and bed, and uh, watching 
whatever or just like staring at the wall essentially cause... well, it's like remember when i had that horrible food poisoning spell like two years ago or whatever mm-hmm. and i was just on the couch like i yeah. wanted to be playing something but i was just on the couch like wake up maybe have a youtube video and just fall back asleep again yeah. that's just all it was so i'm, I'm right there yeah. with you oh uh, that's essentially been it for me that's that's been my week what, what have you been up to you believe in a thing called love uh with world of warcraft <laughs> That's about where I'm at. Classic. Not little classic, bit. but classic. Yeah. Well, a little bit of classic. Oh, my. Trying to get ready for Tuesday. So I'm just, like, logging in. I Basically, here's what I do for classic. Log in. Maybe do the dailies. Trying to f- make sure my professions are at 350 before launch. I think one of them will be, but not both of them. And that's really it. Just getting some money, try to level professions, and then that's it. That's mm-hmm. I'm not doing anything else. When Monday night happens, and it rolls out around 6 p.m., and it's probably going to be unplayable for maybe like the first hour or two. Who knows? But I'll be there trying to trying to go visit my boys in North Rend and take the fight to my homie Arthas. Taking the fight to your homie. Woo! Lich King. Woo! <laughs> some would say the peak of WoW. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Put me in a VTuber of Arthas and just... Hey. <laughs> of Arthas. Hey. I don't know why he's doing like the... Like crab, crab rave. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, anyway, that's that's all really I got. It's mostly been just that. Uh, I have FIFA downloaded to play next week when it uh, does its early release. Cause oh, yeah. I only have like two more weeks of... Uh, my EA stuff from when I played Madden for a little bit, so I'm using it to play FIFA for a little bit, just to get you know get the feet wet, mm-hmm. feel happy, move on, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, and then yeah, that'll that'll really be that. Don't really have because then it'll just be WoW and maybe like the show every now and then or something, but mainly WoW. Everybody's kind of come back and we're enjoying it and we're vibing, so. Good, I say everybody's come good. back in terms of like the people I enjoy playing with are mostly around now. So. Yeah. So yep, that's that. But otherwise, it. we'll see you guys in six days. Six short week. Crazy, crazy how time works. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>